Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video I am thrilled to announce that PeckDB has officially launched the world's best audio wiki for anyone to become an expert in 30 seconds or less. Simply navigate to the PeckDB website and on the bottom right you'll see an option to go learn about audio on our wiki. Simply click on it and press begin to learn about audio. We can see a list of terms here. Very basic, pretty short list. In the future, maybe we'll add some more terms, but for now, this covers the general basics. I'll go through them one by one. Wave, a disturbance or oscillation that travels through space or a medium, transferring energy from one point to another without permanently displacing the particles of the medium. This is the foundational element for sound, which we will get into now, with the sound wave being a mechanical wave caused by vibrating objects, which propagates through a medium, like air, as alternating regions of compression and refraction. Frequency response. The quantitative measure of a system's output magnitude and phase as a function of input frequency. You will commonly see magnitude frequency response miss represented as um, frequency response, but the magnitude response is only the amplitude or loudness component of the frequency response and is typically represented in decibels. And the phase response is the component of the frequency response that expresses the timing or angular relationship between the input and output signal across frequencies. So it's very important to understand that both the magnitude and phase response are required to define the frequency response. Now, the on-axis response in the case of speakers is the frequency response measured at a zero degree angle of incidence from a sound source absent of reflections. The off-axis response is the frequency response measured at angles other than an on-axis. This can be many different angles. And the listening window is the average of the frequency responses measured on axis and at plus or minus 15 degrees horizontally and vertically off-axis excluding reflections. A standing wave is a vibration pattern formed when two waves of the same frequency and amplitude travel in opposite directions and interfere, producing points of constructive and destructive interference that appear stationary in space. A room mode is a specific frequency at which standing waves form in an enclosed space due to sound reflections between room boundaries, resulting in resonant peaks and nulls in the room's frequency response. Modal behavior refers to how sound behaves in an enclosed space typically at low frequencies, due to room modes. The Schroeder, or room transition frequency, is the frequency below which room reflections dominate and modal behavior is significant. A steady state measurement is a frequency response measurement that includes both the direct sound and all subsequent reflections in an environment. Impulse response windowing is a technique to isolate the direct sound in a room impulse response by truncating later arriving reflections, improving measurement accuracy at higher frequencies. A head-related transfer function is a function that describes how an individual's anatomical features, ears, head, and torso, affect the incoming sound, typically measured as the difference between a reference signal and what is received at the eardrum or ear canal. A head and torso simulator is a mannequin-based measurement device that simulates average human head and torso acoustics, often used for capturing HRTFs, or binaural recordings. A diffuse field is an acoustic environment where sound arrives equally from all directions, resulting in a uniform energy distribution. In headphone calibration, a diffuse field In headphone calibration, a diffuse field target assumes a flat frequency response under such conditions when measured with a flat omnidirectional microphone. A diffuse field head-related transfer function is an HRTF measured or modeled under diffuse field conditions, representing how sound from all directions is filtered by the subject's anatomy. A transducer, in the case of audio, is a device that converts energy between electrical and acoustic domains, such as microphones, acoustic to electric, and loudspeakers, electric to acoustic. Nonlinear distortion refers to distortion products such as harmonic or inter intermodulation introduced by a transducer due to nonlinear behavior. Dynamic compression is a nonlinear effect where the output of a transducer increases less than proportionally with input level. Polarity refers to the orientation of a waveform's positive and negative voltage or pressure relative to a neutral center line. Absolute polarity is the consistent directional behavior of an audio system in response to a positive input signal, whether a positive voltage pushes a speaker cone outward. 
And with that, that is the new audio wiki introduced on the PECDB website. Be sure to check it out if you are unfamiliar with these terms. And if you have any suggestions for terms to add, let me know in the comments below. Thank you and have a nice day.